you come in? Greetings to you in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Carol Brooke. I hope you'll spend some time with us as we continue on in this 12-part series called Completing the Course. You know, as a child of God, God has a plan for your life. Very unique, very special, because you are very special to Him. He has designed for you a course that you should follow and aim for the goal of the finish line. The Lord not only has begun a good work in you, child of God, but He wants to finish it. He wants to complete it. And as we cooperate with the workings of the Holy Spirit in our life day by day, no matter what the issue may be, we find that that course is beautifully and more perfectly brought together under the hand of God to His glory and to His praise. And it will be then a fruitful life as we uh, began, we talked about John 15, how the Lord had chosen us and he had appointed us. And the purpose was, was to bring forth fruit. And this fruitfulness is what is the key to his joy and will be to a completion of our joy. But that happens as we follow along in the course that God has designed for us. It's not fair for us to say, Lord Jesus, I want you to be my Savior, but now let me control the reins of my life. Let me make my choices. Let me go and be and do what I want to do, and you just follow me, Lord, and bless what decisions I make. You know, that doesn't work. You need to uh, seek the Lord and let your steps be ordered by God because he has a, a beautiful plan for you, and he will work all things together for the good to them that love him and those that are called according to his purpose. You've received him as Savior. You've been called according to his purpose, not your purpose, but his purpose. Oh, that we might all aim to complete the course and finish, as Paul spoke of in his own life, that race, to finish that course that's a part of us being able to run the race. So we're going to um, continue in this, and this will be lesson number three. Today we're going to uh, call our lesson, What Do You See? What do you see? And the answer would be hope. What do you see? Hope. And we're talking about the Shulamite. We're using her as our example, and she would be found in the book of the Song of Solomon, or you might say the Canticles or the Song of Songs. That little uh, poetic book before you get into the book of Isaiah. Isaiah is big. Go just before it and you would find the Song of Solomon. There we will see beautiful uh, pictures, as it were, illustrations of a relationship between Solomon and this Shulamite girl, this beautiful Shulamite girl that stole his heart. This is spiritually a picture of the relationship between Jesus Christ and his church, his bride, and the individuals that make it up. This is not just about the collective body of Christ, his bride, but it's about us as individuals as well that make that body up. Why would we use her as our illustration? I, I was quite enthralled as I read in the sixth chapter some of the features and the characteristics of this Shulamite gal that captured Solomon's heart. And I found that um, the meaning of her name coming from Shulam, that's why she's called a Shulamite, that that means, uh, according to Cruden's Concordance anyway, complete, complete. For we're talking about completing things, things being finished, finalized, coming to maturity, coming to perfection. She is, as I would call it, the complete one. Her name also can mean perfection and a few other beautiful words, but I want to emphasize the word complete. Now, she was um, in the midst of 
the society of her day. And they were looking at her, seeing her as different than the average woman walking down the street. And as they communed with one another, they began to say to themselves and to each other, who is she? Who is she? And the question is asked, what will you see in her? What, why do you want to look at her? Why are you staring at her? Why are you asking her to, to return and come back so you, you could look at her a little further? Well, what will you see? You're going to see some beautiful features. And that's what we want to take uh, each subject as a lesson. Uh, the beautiful things you would see in this complete one, this Shulamite gal, an illustration for us as we grow in the Lord, we should be uh, being ushered into these dressing rooms for these particular things to beautify our life. Not that we may be glorified, but that He may be glorified in us and through us. That the society in which we live may see Jesus within. I think of the time when there were those that came and said to the disciples, Sirs, we would see Jesus. They weren't interested in seeing the disciples. They wanted to see Jesus. And I think the, the crowd around our lives would look at us and say, you know, I don't, I don't want to know about you. I don't want to see you. I'm curious. I want to see the Jesus in you. Can anybody see Jesus operative in you and in your life? Well, it doesn't just happen by accident. I think it needs to be a desire of your heart is that the, the man of the flesh, the will of the flesh will be moved aside that Jesus may be exalted, that Jesus may be seen. And when the world cries out, we would see Jesus, that they might get a glimpse of him, that they might see how beautiful, how wonderful he truly is, and a hunger might be created in their heart to know him as well. You know, as the Shulamite began to share with her neighborhood, uh, when they asked her a question about, well, where is this beloved you're talking about? She began to describe him. And as she projected this loved one, this Solomon, the love of her heart, they became so curious to know more about him. They said, well, well, tell us about him and tell us where he is so we can go seek him too. Isn't that what the world uh, would say of us if we are truly projecting Jesus, wonderful Jesus, as wonderful as he is? They would want to say to us, well, tell me more. Tell me how I can find him as well and have what you have in your life, which would be the peace of God that passeth all understanding. All right, we're going to go, ladies, to Song of Solomon, the sixth chapter, the 13th verse. We'll read it in the King James. This has to do with those about her looking upon her, watching her life, and they cry out to her. As she begins to depart and go to another direction from where they were, they begin to cry out to her, Return, return, O Shulamite! Return, return, that we may look upon thee. The question is asked, What will ye see in the Shulamite? The answer is, As it were the company of two armies. So we're titling this one, What do you see? And the, the uh, answer I want to focus upon today, ladies, is hope. That's what you would see in someone that is being completed and is complete in Christ. You would see a ray of hope. Some very significant things they began to see in her. If we looked at Song of Solomon 6, verse 10, we would see some subjects here that we're going to cover lesson by lesson. It is written as this, Who is she that looketh forth as the morning, fair as the moon, clear as the sun, and terrible as an army with banners. Just so that word terrible doesn't throw you off course in listening, uh, that she looks as terrible as an army with banners. That means, in, in, in the way we would express it, that word would indicate something else. But scripturally, it means she's as frightening, she's as awesome, she's as splendid, she's as captivating as an army with banners. And we'll talk about that in one of our particular lessons. But who is she that looketh forth as the morning is what we want to focus on in this particular lesson. Some very significant things are seen in the lives of those who are being completed in Christ. Those that are letting the Lord do a finishing work, a maturing work in their lives. Let's focus on the thought that she is as 
the morning. She looketh forth as the morning. Sometimes I get up early and it's still dark inside of my house and I look out my uh, laundry porch window and I can see through the backyard towards the mountains and towards the east where all of a sudden the sun is starting to just peek over those mountains and rise. And you know that, you know, it's about a certain time on the clock because the sun is breaking through and all of a sudden there's going to be a shift from night. It's going to turn into a day and very fast that sun begins to rise and it begins to chase the blackness out of the skies. It's thrilling to watch that happen in just a matter of minutes. Those shifts are changed from night operating into a beautiful day. But you know, there's something about daybreak that's inspiring. It, it gives us hope of possibilities of change. Well, you know, if yesterday was a pretty rough day or a difficult day, or maybe something happened that was very precarious, you can get up and say, after a night's rest, and hopefully you got a night's rest, in spite of what was troubling you on your mind, you get up and you say, well, maybe today is going to be like a brand new day, a brand new start. Maybe something good will happen that'll really make a difference to these circumstances. And especially if you've been ill, uh, the night is hard to bear, isn't it? It seems like if you feel bad or you're sick, the night seems so long and it's hard to endure and you wait for the morning to come and hope that with it, you're going to feel a lot better and pretty soon be on the mend. But they said to her, um, you know, come back, come back, because we want to look at you some more. And, and when they asked the question, well, what do you see in her? What is it you're seeing? Well, one of the first things they said, she's like someone that's looking forth as the morning. In other words, as the morning is peeking through the blackness of a night's sky, this is what she reminds us of. But what happens? When, when that morning shift begins to move in and chase darkness away, Hope rises normally in the heart. Hope rises. And without hope in this world, let me tell you, it would be hard to continue to exist and to um, move forward with your life if you didn't have hope. Hope is so important, but it's like the breaking of a new dawn. The morning is the breaking of a new dawn. The Amplified uses the word dawn versus the King James, which speaks of it, her looking like the morning that's coming forth. What does the sun do? It's projecting its rays, its beam of light, its rays of hope. This complete one, this Shulamite gal, would symbolize someone with a spirit of hopefulness, a spirit of expectation. Do you know your circumstances can pull you down so low, so deep, that you no longer see the light, you don't see the sunshine, you don't see those rays of hope. All you can see is this big, humongous problem. And what is going to be the answer to that? But oh, the Spirit of God would bring to us hope when we feel lame in spirit and we feel it's just hard to go on and push on through what we're dealing with. God would by His Holy Spirit, child of God, if you're listening to me today and you're there in the pit of depression, the Lord would bring you a ray of hope because the Holy Ghost will give you a hope of which you don't have to be ashamed, a hope that's real, that's genuine, that will lift you up out of the shadows and plant your feet on a higher ground. The children of God that are letting God do a work of completion in them, and they're aiming to finish their course for God to a place of maturity and the will of God being complete, you know, they will radiate a spirit of hope. They will radiate a spirit of expectation and opportunity versus just negativism and defeat and, oh, what's the use? And, you know, the world is getting worse and worse. And life can, can just turn in on you if you allow all the negatives of this world and life to seep into your soul. The child of God is letting the Spirit of God have right away. She's like... Um, a flashlight in the midst of the dark. She's, she's projecting these rays of hope that there is, as sure as there's a night, there's going to be a daybreak. There's going to be a change because in Christ, change is possible. Jesus is all about change. That's what conversion means. It means change. Oh, for uh, the beginning of a brand new day is the cry of many a heart. And I'm sure many of you listeners 
um, you're in circumstances that you're looking for God to bring you a different day, a better day, a brighter day. May the word of God do you good today and may it encourage your heart that surely the Lord will come and bring daylight in contrast to the darkness that you have been waiting around in. The a psalmist in Psalms 27, verse 13 through 15, this was his expression in a time when he was very depressed. And he said, what, what would have become of me had I not believed that I would see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living? Wait and hope for and expect the Lord. Be brave and of good courage and let your heart be stout and enduring. Yes, wait for and hope for and expect the Lord. The King James Version of that says, I would have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. No, not afar off on the banks of eternity, but right there while his feet were still trotting this earth, he had to believe that somehow he would yet see God's goodness walk into his life. He said unless he had believed for that and hoped for that, he would have just fainted. He would have given up. And he says, what would have become of me had I not believed that? And you know, when you give up your hopes, and you give up your expectations, you're going to sink into a deep, dark pit, a pit of depression. Because without hope, depression will definitely set in. Hope is so important that we have it. And where are we going to get it? We're going to have to get our hopes out of the promises of God, God's word, out of the spirit of God speaking to our heart and encouraging us, and the body of Christ ministering to us when we're in a difficult place. We have to have hope. If not, we're going to be a container for that awful, murky thing called depression. You know, there's a hope that the Holy Ghost can give you of which you won't have to be ashamed. And that is found in Romans 5, 5. It says, and hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. You have the Holy Spirit within you. The Holy Spirit would shed abroad. In other words, multiply within your heart and expand within your heart because of his love for you, a hope that you won't have to be ashamed of having. You know, some people, they seem to receive a, a satisfaction to see others down and, down and discouraged and hopeless. And yet, the child of God that's filled with the Spirit of God, they don't want to see people uh, in misery and without hope. They want to be a hope bearer. They want to be like the Shulamite. They want others to say, well, she looks like the morning, looking forth, peeking through my darkness. She's bringing encouragement, a spirit of hopefulness my way. Child of God, you may have a neighbor. You may have a relative. You may have someone the Lord will have you encounter in your, in your course as you complete your course that the Lord will plant there. And the Lord wants you to be like the Shulamite, the complete of the work of the Holy Spirit in your life so that you can bring a word of hope to them, a word of encouragement to them. And you will look to them like the morning, maybe coming over those mountains, breaking through the dark, chasing it out of the skies, and bringing to them a new day. Oh, God would use us more and more because there's so many people filled with depressed thoughts and negativity all around us. The world is filled with fear and wondering what is going to take place on this earth next. The news enough is, is enough itself to make us depressed. But we need some light bearers. We need some beams and rays of the morning sun. The hope being brought of a brand new day, the possibility of a brand new day. God can give you a hope of which you don't have to be ashamed. Do you know in Corinthians, it speaks about hope. First Corinthians 13, 13, it says, and now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. But don't forget what remains is not only faith and love, but hope. If you are feeling hopeless today, would you ask the Holy Spirit to light a candle within your soul and to bring you a ray of hope that you can grab onto like a salvation bar and pull yourself up out of the pit and begin to believe God for something better? You know, we have a blessed hope and that we need to share. We should be a ray of light to this world as the church, sharing that there's a hope we can look forward to 
Titus 2 verse 12 through 13 says, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. What gives us hope? We have hope, not for this life only, but we have hope for all eternity that because of Jesus and what he's done for us, that we can live looking You've got to keep living, but we can look for this blessed hope, which is the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 19 says, If we who are abiding in Christ have hope only in this life, and that is all, then we are of all people most miserable and to be pitied. We can't have hope just for this life. We've got to have hope for the life to come. Other than that, we will be miserable people. Oh, yes, there's a dawn. There's a dawning, a breaking of a new day that is born in the womb of the night. The Bible speaks of that in Psalms. And it speaks of how the morning is prepared. It has a preparation period, which is the night season and its womb. That's how he goes forth. Child of God, I especially want to speak to those of you that are feeling very hopeless, very discouraged and depressed, and you feel like you're at a dead end street in your life. Jesus will bring you something to grab hold of, a bar of hope. Take hold today as the word goes forth. And as we share with you this song, the Lord gave me to write one day called Wings of the Morning. That is spoken of in the book of Psalms, that there is such a thing as the wings of the morning. That can be experienced after a very difficult night. May it be a blessing, I pray.
Heavenly Father, I would ask of you that you would touch those by your Holy Spirit that are listening today and their hands are hanging down. They are of weak and a feeble knee. Their hope has been taken from them and they're discouraged and feeling darkness all about them. Lift them up and lift them out. O oh Lord, bring to them the rays of a new day. Chase the darkness away. Set the circumstances aright. But, oh God, put a new running in their feet, a clapping in their hand, a shouting in their mouth of praises to God. Let a change come in the name of Jesus. We ask it for your glory. Amen. Would you join us again next time as we deal with the subject, What Do You See? And we're going to talk about the beauty they see in the Shulamite, the complete one, one that has finished her course. Let flowers bloom. Program copies available. Full set of 12 lessons on CDs, $34. DVDs, $44. Add $3 for shipping and handling, no COD. Original Carol Brooks song album, audio cassettes, $10 each. CDs, $14 each. Add $3 for shipping and handling, no COD. For orders and support gifts only, call 619-445-4748, Pacific Time, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m or visit our website at www.carolbrookministries.com. For more information, please contact Carol Brook Ministries Incorporated, P.O. Box 1909, Alpine, California, 91903. On the internet, visit www.carolbrookministries.com or email carolbrook at carolbrookministries.com. Prayer line number 541-592-4539, Pacific Time, 8 a.m. through 8 p.m.